good morning and welcome to today's session today we are going to discuss bandit models In the last session we have discussed implementations of markov decision process now we will see one of the important class of problems that we can address with the help of reinforcement learning known as bandit models In the next session we will see the python implementation of a bandit model solution The main points in this discussion are meaning of bandit and usability of bandit idea in reinforcement learning a mathematical model to bandit problems different type of bandit models objectives of bandit models various methods to solve bandit models as a first step let us see what is a bandit or meaning of bandit A bandit is defined as someone who steals given money. This simply like a gambler he is trying to clear one person's bank account. It may be his opponent, it may be some other uh, people who manage a casino or something like that. Then there is a natural question why we are discussing this term bandit in reinforcement learning. The reason is very simple we can use the same bandit idea in a class of problems in reinforcement learning many of the classical reinforcement learning problem solution make use of the bandit strategy so the models that make use of the greedy approach of maximizing returns with available actions can be classified as bandit models so bandit is always try to exploit the return so all such problems in mathematics or real life can be modeled in the in the framework of bandit model now let us consider this situation we are faced repeatedly with a choice among k different options or actions after each choice you receive a numerical reward chosen from a stationary probability distribution that depends on the action you selected your objective is to maximize the expected total reward over some time period for example uh, just 1000 action selections or some time steps this maximization problem is called a k bandit model usually the bandit models are explained in terms of uh, some slot machines and its arms this is a better definition in probability now we are going to see what is the definition of bandit problem in wikipedia in probability theory the multi armed bandit problem sometimes called a k armed bandit or mab is a problem in which k resources must be allocated between competing choices in a way that maximizes their expected gain when each choices properties are only partially known at the time of allocation and they and may become better understood as time passes or by allocating resources to the choice so it is a resource allocation problem so formally in probability theory this bandit problem is a resource allocation problem in order to maximize the return in allocation now let us see how we can model it in a mathematical structure a multi armed bandit or a mab can be seen as a set of real distribution real number distribution capital b is equal to set r1 r2 etc rk each distribution being associated with the reward delivery one by one of the lever lever means arm here let mu1 mu2 etc mu k be the mean values associated with these distributions the gambler iteratively plays one lever or more lever uh, per round and observes the associated reward mathematically speaking he may uh, work on a single lever or he can choose many lever in a particular iteration there is no problem 
we can extend this definition to that level also. The objective is to maximize the sum of the collected rewards. If it is a probabilistical situation, it is expected collected reward. Our aim is to maximize the expected reward. The horizon capital H is the number of rounds that remain to be played. Suppose we have completed all already t iterations. From the t iterations, we go away um, um, background for the model. That means from that we can uh, generate a distribution for uh, different actions or different arms. Now we just compare this bundled problem with our Markov decision process. This is a very important. Uh, observation the bandit problem is formally equivalent to a one state Markov decision process if you think about this stage diagram it's very simple everyone uh, draw that state diagram in your uh, nursery classes you just remember how you create a um, simple flower in your nursery class first of all you draw a circle that is our state then you create a petal how you can create a petal you start a a line or a curve from the circumference of the circle and move outward then come back to the same uh, uh, circle the boundary of that circle it creates one petal now you just point the end of uh, that petal towards the uh, circumference with an arrow that is the first arm or action corresponding to first arm suppose you have 10 arm you just create 10 petal so a 10 petal uh, flower is equivalent to a 10 armed um, bandit that much simple so what we have seen in Markov decision process is a higher level of uh, such models so solution is relatively simple in the case of bandit model okay let us define the problem as minimizing a function rho called a regret function through selected play of arms the regret rho for t rounds is defined as rho is equal to capital T into mu star minus sigma t equal to 1 to capital T r cap of t. It is called a regret function. Then my aim is to minimize uh, this regret. Regret is always uh, some positive quantity. So it is minimum when this t into mu star is equal to the sigma. The sigma is nothing but sum of returns. That means rho is minimum whenever the sum is larger, sum is return. So whenever the total return become maximum, automatically the regret is minimum. Then there is a natural question why we are using uh, this rho to define this problem as a minimization problem. Uh, you already know the reason because in machine learning problems we consider uh, convex error functions or convex objective functions because the convex objective function should have a global minimum it's a possibility here also this is a convex function so minimization gives you better result so we can extend our gradient descent method etc into this bandit model that is the advantage we are not going to generate a new model we model these situ all situations into our familiar machine learning models and try to solve it in some situations it is more simple than uh, solution of machine learning algorithms okay where mu star is the maximum of expected returns of various actions and rt cap is the reward in round uh, round a small t and rho is the expected difference between the reward sum associated with the optimal strategy that is t into mu star and the sum of the collected rewards so our aim is to get a zero regret strategic policy it is um, our uh, objective but we won't get uh, that much optimum result it may be some uh, non-zero positive quantity this regret leads to a non-zero positive quantity that much now we create an iterative counterpart because in machine learning algorithms we try al uh, iterative approach because that is more easy because we are doing computational operation computational operation or numerical uh, approaches are very good on iterative formulas instead of classical or analytical closed form solutions in the language of rl our aim is to formulate a policy that fix best actions so as to maximize the expected total return iteratively calculate q value for each action a 
and choose the best action that's all we are trying to connect this into our previously defined um, reinforcement learning model okay so q n of a that means the expected return after n this iteration that is equal to q n minus 1 expected return at n minus 1 state plus 1 by capital T into reward at n the state minus q n minus 1 that means expected return in the n minus 1 step we code this formula directly from uh, expected value at end the state expected value at end the state is actually average of returns that is a small r1 plus small r2 plus etc small r n here uh, that is capital t divided by capital t total value by total number that is average then we see simply rearrange the terms we got this iterative formula so we got expected q value iterative next stage is selection of action i will select those action which gives maximum expected return so pi is our policy policy means which action is to be choose or which arm is to be selected in the case of uh, uh, slot machines so argmax that means choose those action corresponding to the qn of a with the maximum qn of a that means we simply arrange qn of a in an array then scan through the array then mark the maximum q value then just identify its position suppose it is 10th position then we will choose 10th action that is the meaning of argmax of a every iteration the agent choose the arm or action with the maximum reward that means when we apply this policy pi this algorithm always try to select those action which have maximum return maximum um, expected return so what is the problem it always try to those action which gives maximum reward achieve at each step so all other arms or actions will be rejected so it is simply exploit those arms whose reward is larger so exploitation is happening and exploration will not happen it will never touch other actions this similar to a person who is interested only in chicken and he is going to live his entire life just by eating chicken so so much boring situation so this greedy uh, algorithm is such a bored algorithm so we think about make it more flexible the easiest way is to explore over this random actions to some extent that means suppose we are repeating this uh, operation 1000 times you just select 10 random actions without considering is uh, its uh, maximum reward etc then remaining uh, 9000 sorry 900 iterations in the greedy way that means choose those action with the maximum return that is uh, like a balance between exploitation and exploration that means we have to control uh, the choice of action how we can do it that is our next policy that is called epsilon greedy policy as i told you you just allow this agent to select some percent of actions without looking into its reward that can be attained with the help of this new policy see I fix an epsilon that is why it is called epsilon greedy policy that percentage of cases you should choose random actions then the remaining remaining is 1 minus epsilon because it's a percentage 1 minus epsilon percentage of classes will be in the argmax way percentage means this 1 minus epsilon into 100 you think like that so that much percentage of actions will be greedy way so more actions will be in greedy way some minor portion will be in uh, random way suppose this epsilon is equal to 0.5 then 50 50 combination if epsilon is more than 0.5 then what happened automatically 1 minus epsilon become a lower number a smaller number comparatively and so what happened this will become small so more random exploration will happen that is a risky case if you select 
more actions randomly without considering its uh, return then there is a possibility for low income or low return there is a natural situation so there should be a balance between uh, this exploration and exploitation how to identify this you have to identify this alpha so not alpha the epsilon some uh, textbooks instead of epsilon they are using alpha in that case it's alpha greedy policy okay so how to identify this uh, optimum epsilon that is again another problem you have to repeat this epsilon greedy policy with different 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 values of epsilon now I did uh, this epsilon greedy algorithm and uh, greedy algorithm in python and got uh, this graph I am using epsilon equal to zero in that case it is fully a greedy algorithm it gives this uh, green curve this green curve uh, just goes from zero to some 4.5 then it becomes steady that means it will gives lower average reward and also it becomes stable so it is horizontal to this number of iterations there is no improvement happened over iterations after uh, this 10 or 20 something like that then what about epsilon is equal to 0 0.01 I just add some epsilon is equal to 0 0.01 so it is an epsilon greedy algorithm it gives a blue graph this blue graph again start from 0 but it has more slope goes on and it leads to some uh, 6.7 something near to 1000 iteration okay but when epsilon is equal to 0.1 i got this red graph so average reward increases more sharply and it goes to some 8.3 on 1000 iteration so from this graph it is evident that when epsilon is equal to 0.1 we get maximum return over 1000 iteration so the return is purely depending on the value of epsilon so choice of epsilon is very important so you have to iteratively check the effect of epsilon on this expected return or average return okay now we think about epsilon decay policy it's again a refined form of uh, epsilon greedy approach uh, for example just consider uh, i am going to find a coffee house which is served the best coffee in Kottayam there are many coffee shops in Kottayam then every day I just go to the town and visit a coffee shop and have a coffee from uh, that particular shop after few days I just cover uh, most of the you know, coffee houses it's simply an exploration step then on the tenth day I got the conclusion the best coffee will be from Indian coffee house I'm talking about Indian coffee house in Kota then there is no need of exploration then definitely whenever I need a coffee I will go to Indian coffee house okay that means this exploration become smaller and smaller after a few days this epsilon becomes very very small that is why I am more greedy to this, uh, that Indian coffee house isn't it so a fixed epsilon is not a good policy as number of iteration increases epsilon value should be decreases so I am using f epsilon as a function of this num number of iteration here a, a simple uh, function is epsilon at nth iteration is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus n into beta uh, because when I choose just 1 by n when n is equal to 0 I got a problem in Python so it is better to add some constant along with n but also remember when I put 1 by n it decreases sharply as n increases so it can be scaled with the help of a parameter beta which is less than 1 in this way I can create a varying epsilon depending on number of iteration this is a very simple example we can choose uh, more scalable functions like log function in addition to this expression you just put a logarithm of 1 by 1 plus n beta log of 1 by 1 plus n beta it is small scaled down that means even though n is increases this epsilon of n decreases more slowly so what happen it gives more opportunity to explore our more actions in our action space okay then what is really happening 
when we introduce this epsilon in this way this epsilon will be large in the initial state that means we will explore more after the iteration goes beyond some 10 or 20 epsilon becomes very very small in that case the exploration become uh, uh, in a smaller rate we will exploit the best action in that way we can improve this policy policy means which action to be selected okay now I just compare epsilon greedy and now epsilon decay algorithm in the previous slide we have seen epsilon al uh, greedy algorithm is better than epsilon uh, ordinary greedy algorithm epsilon algorithm epsilon greedy greedy and epsilon greedy we compare in the previous slide greedy is inferior to epsilon greedy now I compare the better option epsilon greedy to epsilon decay this blue graph is epsilon greedy algorithm with epsilon value 0 0.1 but it is inferior to the epsilon decay epsilon decay will give you uh, more expected reward on thousand iteration okay for all these um, graph I am using thousand episodes and each episode I will iterate this algorithm thousand times then only I can create this comparative plot now we will move on to another improved policy that policy is called upper confidence bound bandit or UCB UCB upper confidence bound then why we are using this upper confidence bound the reason is statistical here our aim is to find out those action which gives maximum expected Q value there is a time expected expectation or average so this average will vary as the number of iteration increases or number of iteration varies so we got a mean distribution distribution of mean so a fixed mean is not that much good in the case of iterative methods so we think about a confidence interval for that mean the constant the confidence interval is a very simple idea it is an interval which contain our expected value that means we get a lower bound and upper bound at a particular level of confidence usually in statistics we choose 95 percentage confidence 95 percentage confidence interval means up to 5 percentage error this mean will lie in that specified interval so mean should be the center point on the right side the upper part left side the lower part we are talking about those action which gives maximum expected return maximum expected return but that expectation is not fixed it may vary so we just add the larger part of or upper confidence bound of that expectation that's all we just add upper confidence bound then what happened it will give more stimulus to those actions which have more variation in mean okay this principle is called the optimism in the face of uncertainty whenever we use the confidence interval for any parameter that is called interval estimation that is a, a nice name that is called finding optimism in the face of uncertainty so the confidence interval specifies the interval within which the mean reward value of arms lies in the case of a general problem instead of arms we can use action the UCB selects an arm or action that has the high UCB to explore high it, it takes the range of means with the higher bound that's all so UCB can be calculated for iterative problems using this formula square root of 2 times logarithm of n by n n of a where n is the uh, uh, iteration number suppose we are doing this iteration in 100th uh, iteration number so this n is 100 there are uh, we expect uh, 1000 iteration and we are at the position of 999 that 999 should be here then n n of a n means number number of times that action repeats or number of times this arm is selected at that particular iteration step so this value gives UCB you just add this UCB to this expected Q value of that particular action we will do this for all action so automatically what happened it will favor 
those actions with more variation in mean. More variation means more variation in rewards. That means there is a possibility for better rewards by choosing that particular action. Okay. It is similar to uh, uh, defining that risk factor in stock analysis. Those people who are uh, focused on this more risky bonds for long term will get more, uh, more return. That is the idea. We are using that same idea here in the, in the form of UCB. Then there is a question, why we are using UCB? We have already that Epsilon Decay algorithm. In the Epsilon Decay algorithm, we have to identify the best value of Epsilon. But in the UCB, there is no such parameters. You got a clear cut definition for UCB using this uh, log function and square root function a number of times that particular action repeat in that particular iteration level. Okay. That is why we are uh, preferring this upper confidence bound than epsilon decay algorithm. Oh yes, in this plot I will show you how this UCB behave. The same experimental setting um, it starts from the zero value, zero expected Q value. It goes on and leads to uh, 1.43 something like that. So UCB is better than epsilon greedy even in uh, my problem. In that case I start from zero initial value. In some situation we start with a higher initial value as th that means initial optimal value iteration is also possible instead of that zero initial value we choose a larger value then there is a question how we fix this larger value we can fix this larger value by domain knowledge if you have enough domain knowledge we can set this uh, optimal value as the initial value it is called initial optimal bundle. that means instead of that initial zero value we replace it and apply greedy algorithm there is no epsilon greedy or epsilon dk same greedy algorithm but a small change in the initial value that small change is uh, change has more in, in effect that is uh, affected by um, our domain knowledge okay there is a uh, one more uh, bandit uh, that is contextual bandit a multi armed bandit is focused only on actions with all these problems we focused on our actions there is no reference to the state but this contextual bandit focused on state 2 a contextual bandit consider both the arm or action and the machine such bandits may be considered as a multi-state markov decision process in the previous slides we have seen that a simple multi-armed bandit is like a flower picture so that it has only one state that is the central circle suppose we are going to use context bundles there are lot of flowers and though uh, that flowers will be interconnected that is the only difference such contextual bundle has more application uh, but one thing is uh, this contextual bundle can be uh, solved with the help of markov decision process only we have all the probability distribution information related to the model otherwise we cannot solve using markov decision process in such situations we will use a machine learning pure machine learning approach okay one of uh, the tech gains uh, using this contextual bandit is netflix they uses the contextual bandits for building customized music recommendations okay see we are familiar with a netflix screen we just click on a particular card then that card will open that particular cinema or video or uh, music will be played for us that, that means we click on it that means we select it that selection means a choice or action that action is important but that action is actually from our interest i choose melody or i choose classical music because that is uh, my choice that choice is from my taste so the state is very important so there is a connection between state and action so um, we can exploit this connection with the help of uh, some recommendation suppose I am clicking on a class classical music then Netflix should understand I am a person who who is more interested in uh, this type of generous so it should give me more recommendation uh, related to the classical music that recommendation system can be developed with the help of uh, this contextual bandit so contextual bandits can be utilized in the in the building up of recommendation system now important takeaways in this lesson we have seen many many important points bandit models are the simplest reinforcement learning models 
It can be used in many real-time decision-making applications like A or B testing, fund allocation to various quarters, advertisement portfolio, stock market portfolio, etc. For example, this fund allocation to various quarters. For example, um, consider a university that the university uh, should provide fund for research. Usually, the fund will be released for those group they are very much energetic or they are very eagerly participate in the research program if some teams they are not good in uh, that much research activities automatically they will not get that much good uh, level of funds if we repeat this procedure in a greedy way that means we will sanction fund to those people who are very much aggressive in research then what happened these slow people will never get uh, any fund from the university it will create a demoralization in this uh, research scenario. So we have to apply some epsilon greedy or epsilon dk greedy algorithm there. They will definitely help us to solve the issue. How to distribute the fund or which um, here the action means which research group should be selected for funding. Such problems can be addressed with the help of uh, uh, bandit models. And also uh, recently um, we can we we have used uh, these bandit models in research uh, analysis of uh, commercial uh, commercial data suppose we ask some so questions to the respondents through a questionnaire and we collect it back then suppose they are yes or no questions yes or no questions can be considered in the form of bandit then we apply a bandit model on the data then what happened i got uh, the result in the form of a policy which choice should be addressed now or uh, whose uh, option is more important like that we can give suggestions with the help of bandit models instead of usual p-value statistics in research okay that is another one of the interesting use of ben, uh, bandit models in uh, research in uh, commerce or finance and such areas okay then basically the action with maximum return is selected that is called greedy algorithm so exploitation exploration dilemma will be created we have to Manage this exploration exploitation dilemma with the help of improved policies like epsilon greedy, epsilon dk, ucb, etc. If a multi armed bandit gives only binary rewards, each arm gives either yes or no, true or false, 0 or 1, such bandit models can be termed as binary bandit. Otherwise, it is called a general binary bandit. General, general bandit, not binary bandit, general bandit. So, that is the simple classification. Uh, remember if an arm or the action gives only true or false or zero one or binary result or binary rewards we can categorize it in the form of binary bandit otherwise it is called a general multi armed bandit or uh, general k armed bandit usually k armed bandit is general k armed bandit if it is binary you should specify it is a binary multi armed bandit okay so thank you. Uh, the next session we will see the implementation of bandit models in Python. Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching.